All right, today a Yamaha CR1020. Uh, I previously have worked on this, I replaced the lamps. And when I did that, I noticed that there had been a previous repair to the protection board. And uh, the user who hadn't used this for a while is reporting that um, <clears throat> when he turns it on, after a little bit, he'll hear a pop and then it will kill the sound of the speaker. So it's going in and out of protection. So what I want to do is turn this on, see how quickly it comes in or out of protection, uh, just so I can have a baseline uh, to go from, and then we'll, we'll crack it open and look to see what's going on. So I'm gonna turn it on, kind of see what happens. So there, the relay just clicked and there was a pop. So I'm back to the Yamaha. CR1020 with the popping issue. I had it running on my bench. Um, it was on auxiliary or uh, I guess phono. I had the volume turned up pretty loud. Try to get it to pop. I was trying to determine whether or not the pop was coming from both speakers or one speaker, but this is an intermittent problem. So um, I'm going to start under the assumption that the pops are coming from both channels. And I think I mentioned, it's been a couple of days, I think I mentioned earlier that I had replaced the bulbs in this, or the lamps in this, and I noticed that someone else had done some work on the protection, uh, the power supply protection board. So I wonder if they were chasing down the same issue. So I think I'm going to start there, uh, look at the protection circuit, protection board. If this has a protection board, I need to get in there and look at it again power supply. First I'm going to look for maybe some cracked solder joints. Uh, I would suspect probably a bad transistor in the protection circuit. Could be a bad driver in the amp section on one of the channels. That's why I was trying to listen to see if it would do both channels or, or just one channel. But with an intermittent problem like this, unless you can determine what triggers the popping, it's kind of hard to uh, determine things like that. So I'm going to remove this from the case. Now I do want to explain to anybody who is going to service one of these and take it out of the case. Uh, you want to turn your tuning dial all the way to the right. And the reason why you want to turn it all the way to the right is there's a little clip in here that you can actually snag, right, the, the tuning dial indicator on. Um, I've had these come to me, in fact I've had a couple come to me with severed tuner dial cords that I've had to restring, which is a nightmare. Well, not a nightmare, it's just I don't, it, it's more time consuming than it should be. And I think what happens is sometimes that tuning dial will get snagged on that sharp piece of metal and it will sever that cord. So all the way to the right, like I have it set there. And I'm gonna actually reposition the camera so you can kind of see how I need to take this apart in case you need to do it. But I will speed this section up um, as I disassemble this. So I don't know if you can see it, here's that metal tab I was referring to right here, right? Not super sharp, but it is sharp enough to where if you snag it, it could, it could cause damage to that dial string. So uh, what I couldn't get in the frame there was I had to, when I had it up on its edge, I did all of the screws except for the top two. I didn't want to undo those because then the whole unit would shift down. So then I lay it on its side, position it with the lazy Susan to where I could come up from underneath with a screwdriver and then remove the final two screws. So here we have the 1020 and I'm going to move the camera up top and kind of show you what someone else had been looking at and what leads me to believe that someone else was uh, trying to resolve this popping issue. 
Here's a view from up top. I had to kill the light on that side because it was kind of washing out. Uh, what leads me to believe someone else is in here. So if you look at these capacitors, somebody had been, I'm assuming, checking these off with, you know, putting a little green dot on them. It looks like some were replaced. Though These don't look original, right? These look new. I uh, don't know about the transistors. They're dusty, uh, but I don't know if any of them have been replaced or not. So this is what makes me think someone else was tra trying to track this issue down. Um, these can kind of be tough to work on, on the boards on these. So I'm going to start by probing this for some voltages and I'm going to get one of my one of my lights and look at these transistors and see if these are originals or if somebody has swapped in some modern replacements but I suspect they're probably originals because they're awfully dirty looks like maybe one maybe one there was replaced So anyway, then I'll have to get to the underside of this board. I have to probably remove this. It looks like yeah, it's not going to be easy. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's what made me or makes me believe that someone else was looking at this problem. So we'll start poking around on this and uh, see what we find. I've been poking around on this a little bit. I, I didn't want to get that on video just because uh, it would be boring just watching me tap and poke and prod. And you know, what I'm trying to do is identify maybe if there's a loose solder joint first before I go into looking at capacitors or transistors. So what's interesting is, turn this on, see if it comes up. Okay, so saw the relay, click there. See this. Okay, so it's going in and out of protection right now. Okay, so notice how I pulled the board this way, comes out of protection. If I start tapping in this area here on this connector, so loose solder joint underneath this this little plastic connector here I'm thinking there's a loose solder joint down there so how I got to that point was had this on it was playing and I started just kind of you know tapping around on the board you know pushing down starting to flex things and I and I you know just tapped up here just like there and I heard a click so I just tapped up here and then I noticed that only if I tapped in this general vicinity did it um, come out of protection or go into protection, right? So then I just started flexing the board, pushing around here. And, you know, I've had several Yamahas where it's a cold solder joint, right? I even, you know, move these transistors, the heat sinks around a little bit, to see if there was anything bad there. So I am fairly confident that something in this area it may not necessarily be the connector but something in this general area has a cold or a bad cracked solder joint so um, the next video will be of me disassembling pulling this board out uh, I need to figure out exactly how that's connected because I haven't had this part of it apart before. So I will be uh, re referring to the schematic to see how to best tackle this. And I'm thinking either the solder joint is on this board or on this board where this connection happens. So I think that's, uh, that's my plan of attack on this. So let's get to figuring out how to access the underneath side of this board because if I look it's not accessible from the bottom 
So I'll have to uh, figure out how that is uh, attached. All right, so on to figuring out how to get underneath this board. I may have to uh, change the camera angle around here, but I'm gonna try it in this position. But I believe what I need to do is to check the solder joints. Um, I need to get this board out first. There are two screws here. I believe if I remove those screws, I should be able to, I think, slide the board this way, it looks like, because there are some brackets here where there's a groove. There are a couple of screws and a bracket underneath, but I don't think, they don't appear to touch this board. So I'm kind of guessing, remove those screws, slide the board this way. Then I'll have to look to see what's going on with this board. It looks like that's potentially held in with maybe some screws underneath. I really don't know. I haven't had one of these apart. So I'm flying blind a little bit here. So I will try this view, assuming I don't get in the camera's way too much. And um, hopefully I can get to the bottom of this without needing to remove uh, any of these wires. So here goes nothing. So I was able to get the board out. Uh, getting underneath here is gonna be an issue. But this power supply runs really hot. Um, I, noticed, I noticed that this was really, really warm when this was running. And I'm wondering if the heat, maybe um, there's an issue with these connectors here. It could either be the solder joints, um, underneath this connector or the pins that come from the other side. The trick is going to be, oh, maybe it's not gonna be so bad. The trick is gonna be getting underneath here to shore up those solder joints. So I think what I'll probably do is I'm gonna to have to flip this up on its side. I'm gonna reposition the camera and then kind of come at it from the top and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try that and uh, I'm gonna speed the view up or speed the film up as I kind of flow some new solder there. I know it's probably not necessary to do it this way, but um, I, I like to remove the solder and then put new solder in in place. Wow, it looks like somebody's got a lot of jumpers going. I don't know if you can make that out, but somebody who did some work in here, they must have lifted some traces or something because we've got stuff jumped all over here. Oh my gosh, look at that. I mean, you got to do what you got to do if you lift a trace, but that's, uh, that's some nasty work right there. So now it was this part of the board specifically, it was this part of the board that I was touching and, and it was popping in and out. Uh, hopefully I can get this board out as well. That may be a little bit tougher to get that board out of there. So strategy is going to be to flow solder to all of these. You know, I wonder, I don't see any cracks. I don't see any cracks in the board, but yeah, somebody's somebody's been in here. Gosh, look at that. That's horrible. I mean, it's it's good for the repair. It's just what 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 did they do? Like, wonder what they were trying to track down there. All right, so soldering iron's warming up. Uh, mine's really slow to warm up because it's a cheap one. But I'm gonna flow new solder to these. Then I'm gonna flip it back down. Look at this board. Flow new solder to the pins. And 
assuming I can get all that done, then we'll put it back together and try to get it to pop again. Wow, that was a little bit tougher than I thought it was having the unit up so high. Trying to solder all those cleanly. It's like I got one I gotta touch up a little bit here. And do this one. Like I'm all contorted trying to do this. Again, the folks that do these videos and make it look easy, they are some pretty skilled individuals. So I, I think I think I can get to the pins. It's not going to be ideal, but I think I can get to the pins without removing this board. But I also believe that I can just remove two screws. The problem is this board has the filter caps, right? Big, heavy capacitors and it looks like I can loosen the screws and slide it this way to get back behind it. So I'm going to try that and see what happens. I was able to slide that up, I think just enough to get in here and hit those, hit those uh, pins. To, it looks like there are some cracks. There's a, I know you can't see it. There's, it looks like there's a crack on this pin, which is the pin that I was hitting. There's a, there's a crack that runs, yeah, so. I'm hoping that's the problem. So I'm going to speed this up while I try to tackle this. And uh, once I get that done, I'm just going to button it up and put everything back together and then see if we can get this thing to pop again. It is absolutely amazing how far a screw will fly when it hits my bench. And it's also amazing how receivers will just eat parts. Like this screw slid and I was looking for it, I couldn't find it. And I could hear it rattling around and then it popped out right underneath the receiver and it went flying like four feet that way which is uh, kind of amazing. So I'm sliding the this board back into position on those pins that I just resoldered. Okay. And you know, and it's not just this receiver but there are other receivers where if you have connectors plastic connectors and then pins you know sometimes to get those off you have to wiggle them back and forth well wiggling it back and forth can actually damage some of those traces some of the solder joints and i'm not saying that's what happened in this case what happened in this case was the heat most likely if this solves the problem um i just want to give this one more look get my flashlight and just I'm going to make sure I didn't create a solder bridge by using too much solder solder on those pins and that looks clean I checked that board 
So I think we are ready to test, fingers crossed, that should power this up. I'm going to keep the volume at minimum. Power this up, relay should click in after five or six seconds, and then I'm going to start poking and prodding the board again. Okay, just turned it on. There's a relay click. And right here, yep, right here is where when I was pushing down, it was popping. And I was just tapping up here. And now it's not doing anything. And I'm not, when I say not doing anything, it's not popping. I mean, I was. I would just touch that pin and it would pop. So let me do a quick sound check. I don't know what, I've got this on tuner. Now it's on a station. Got sound. All right. Well, it appears that it appears that that was probably the issue. Now, what I like to do is um, I'm going to throw this on my test bench. I am going to put it back in its case. I'm going to put it on my <clears throat> my my other bench here and let it run for a couple of hours while I do some other things and I'm just going to put it on auxiliary, turn it up and see if it pops. And um, what it was doing is after I had powered it on and I even had it on auxiliary, no load, after like five or six minutes it would pop. So I want to make sure it doesn't do that and that that pop was just a matter of this board heating up right, and causing a little bit of, of thermal expansion to, to make that solder joint crack and there was a definite crack there I mean I could see it it was plain as day a big one so um, yeah hopefully that solved the problem so I'm gonna speed through putting this back in the case so procedure for putting this back into the case turn the tuning dial all the way to the right disconnect my speakers and I was telling you about having to create leads right so one of my speakers right this is what my leads normally look like. This one broke off yesterday, so I need to fashion some new leads for my my speaker wire, which I was explaining. And I say yesterday because that's when I kind of left off on working on this. So uh, I'm going to speed through this, and uh, I'm going to throw it on my test bench now. Um, I'll probably shoot a follow-up, you know, just showing this... Uh, not popping when I'm when I know that it's done at least I'm reasonably sure that it's done so uh, the next thing you should see is this buttoned up after running for I don't know half an hour hour or so So this has been running for about 15 minutes. No pops. A lot of times if it's a bad solder joint, if you pound on the table, kind of tap the unit, it'll, it'll pop. That vibration will make it pop. So I think this is probably good for now. Um, sounds great. Yamaha sound great. They're, they're great machines. Um, yeah, so I think this one is good. I think if it comes back in, if it starts popping again, which I don't think it will, but if it does, I may talk to the owner about um, maybe just recapping that power supply board. But 
yeah, I think this one's good. So if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.